Hey guys, this is Navidrome, and Navidrome is a super lightweight, super fast music server that allows you to access your music from anywhere via a mobile client or a web interface. And in this video, I wanna show you how to install Navidrome using Docker. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So like I mentioned, this is Navidrome and it is uh, the music server that I've had up and running on my Docker system for uh, for a while now. In fact, if we come up here to the top right, uh, we can see that this server uh, has been up for 39 days um, and it's just, it's something that I've always got running. So I've always got access to my music, whether again, I'm here at my house or I'm out on the go, I can access all of this through a web interface uh, on my phone or an app on my phone. Uh, so it's very, very versatile in how you can access your music uh, for whatever you've got stored on your local network. So this is music that I, I actually I had in a collection from about a decade ago. I've added some to it here fairly recently, but uh, the thing that I really do like about it is that um, it is super, super fast. If I, you know, if I just click on here, uh, like so, that's how fast, you know, we're, we're going from uh, page to page. Uh, and again, this is all stored in Docker. Um, and, and all of this is happening uh, this quickly, even with, uh, you know, more than more than 12,000 songs in my library. Uh, it uses such a small amount of RAM and resources to do its thing. And it does transcoding on the fly. So uh, I will say that this is a this this system, this Navidrome system doesn't have a lot of frills or gimmicks. It is very much first and foremost, a music server. Um, it does allow you to have, you know, multiple users. In fact, I can show that here real quick. Uh, if we come up to the top right, we can uh, click on settings and go to users. Um, and here you can see that I've got a couple of users in here. Uh, we can see the username, uh, the, the the name, like the, the given name, whatever, uh, whether or not they're admin, when they last log in, and uh, when they were updated. Of course, I added this user this morning just to do some testing, but, um, but you can have users on here. Um, you can, uh, if we come into activity, uh, again, we can see the server uptime. We can see how many folders were scanned. Um, <clears throat> let's, if we go over here to players, uh, we can see uh, what, what has been used recently. Uh, of course, this is just this morning. Uh, what else? We've got transcodings. So if there's any transcoding that needs to happen, it can do that again on the fly, as long as your CPU or your system will handle that. Let's see, personal here, we can, we can go into change our theme from... Uh, several different options, actually. Let's check, take a look at green. Green looks all right. Uh, I like dark or extra dark. I, I always have when it comes to uh, user interfaces, or maybe not always, but but for for a while now, anyway. Um, so yeah, so it's like I said, it's very much first and foremost, it is a music server. It doesn't have a lot of frills and gimmicks of allow this person to do this, but not that person to do that. Those sorts of things. Um, so again, like I mentioned in this video, I want to show you how to get this installed. Super, super easy, very quick to do. So uh, let's actually take a look at that now. So I'm going to do this uh, via Portainer. Uh, I'm going to come over here to stacks. I'm just going to add a new stack. And then if we come over, well, well, here's their Docker Hub. I will have links to all of this stuff in the description down below so you can get more information about whatever resources you're looking for. Uh, but here, here's actually the, the, the page I was looking for. This is their Docker Compose uh, stack or, or whatever you want to call it here uh, right there. You could also run it as a, as a command line if you wanted to do that. But I like to do things with Docker Compose. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that you can see right here there are some environmental variables. And if we come over here to um, configuration options uh, and scroll down, there's a whole list of additional 
um, environmental variables that you can use to customize your install, uh, you know, for, for everything from cover art priority to scanners to Last.fm and Spotify uh, integrations for cover arts and things like that. Um, there are lots of stuff in here that you can definitely add to your environmental variables to really tweak and customize your installation for uh, your preferences and your needs. So, so pretty straightforward as far as that is concerned. Um, if we come back over to, oops, no, here. Uh, so if we just take a quick look at this, uh, version three, services Navidrome, the image is um, Deluan, I think, uh, slash Navidrome. We're gonna use their latest tag there, your user. These are gonna be uh, PUID and PGID. Um, so if you're not sure how to get that, we'll cover that here in just a moment, but you will need to get those numbers to put in there uh, for the folder permissions uh, for, for your config and your music folders. Um, ports, uh, ports are standard. You can, you can change, uh, the, the first half of this, to whatever you need it to be. Uh, we can restart unless stopped, uh, re unless stopped is fine. Always works as well. Uh, you got some options, uh, that you can, you can put in there. Of course, we've got the environmental variables that we touched on very briefly. Uh, these are all optional, which I really do appreciate. Um, the scan schedule is once an hour, log level is info, session timeout is 24 hours. And then if you wanted to, you could put in a base URL if you wanted to do that for like reverse proxies and things like that. Um, and we've got two volumes. One is the path to your configuration data. The other is a path to your music folder. What I like about this is that right here on the server or the, the container side, this is set to read only, which means in the app with this setting, there's no chance that the app is going to have permissions to delete your music. Uh, so I really do appreciate that they've got that in there uh, so that it's read only and, and no chance of that app doing any damage to your collection if anything goes wrong. So let's jump back over here to Portainer. Uh, I'm gonna give this thing a name. I'm gonna call it Navidrome, like so. And then I have a, a Docker Compose that I've already customized a little bit. Uh, really the only thing here I have changed is uh, the the user ID, this uh, UID and GID, um, and then the volumes here. So <clears throat> with this, now I'm on Open Media Vault for this particular uh, server. So what I'm gonna use is the to get the IDs that I'm looking for for the UID and the GID, I'm going to use the, the username that I log into Open Media Vault with. Now in this case, for me, that's admins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, a terminal window here, and we're going to get uh, logged in to my server. And what I wanna do is just do ID, and like I mentioned, my username is admin on this server, uh, which isn't great, but what do you do? Uh, so I'm gonna click that, and here we can see that UID is 998, GID is 100, and if you look right over here, that's what I've put in right there. Uh, if you've got a different username for your setup, you'll put that username in. So let's say you were on a, a Raspberry Pi, you do ID, and then probably Pi, um, and hit enter. I won't get a good re a result with that, so I'm not gonna do it, but um, but that's you, you would just swap in your username to get those two variables to put in here. Uh, also, now that I think about it, um, if we come over to this hub.ocker.com page, uh, we can see if we go to tags and click on, let's go down here to uh, latest. Man, where is latest? Holy cow. Anyway, these all look the same for the most part anyway. But if we come over here, we can see the OS and the architecture uh, will cover basically all of your desktop stuff with the first two and then all of your, your ARM uh, Raspberry Pi stuff with the last three. So basically any of these tags should work. Uh, latest should be just fine as well. So just know that you can do this on a desktop uh, PC, uh, CPU or, or a Raspberry Pi setup. Just to put that out there. Um, and then, so what else we have here? So we've, we've covered the user ID and user group. Um, the ports, again, you can change those if you want to. Um, and then below that, I'm just going to leave, in fact, I'm gonna take that out. I don't need that in there, but I'm gonna leave all of these other environmental variables in there. They're just fine for what I'm doing here. Uh, for the volumes, uh, the first one again is data. Uh, this is where I'm going to store all of my configuration data on this server. And then uh, below that, I've got another path uh, that I've got set up. Uh, in uh, in Open Media Vault, and if we actually come over to here, uh, we can see I've got a couple of different folders here, but we're going to use this top one, um, and and just because they fixed it in six, it's coming. But in six, there's actually an option to to copy this. If you don't want to, if you don't want to type this in, you can just right click, go to inspect, and then uh, open this up right here, and just double click in there, right click, and say copy, and then you can come back over here and paste that in right there. And that's basically all you need to do. Of course, you will want to make sure that there is music 
uh, in that folder or that there will be music in that folder. Don't put this, don't attach this to your videos or your movies or your, your whatever. Don't do that. Um, but let's, let's do this. So I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to do uh, 192.168.69.112 like, oops, slash music. There we go. And in here you can see I've got uh, four artists uh, that are set up and ready to go as far as music is concerned. So once we've got all of these things taken care of and in place, uh, the next thing we can do is just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. And hopefully we won't get any error messages. And here in just a moment, we'll have a new music server up and running with just that little effort. All right, so that was actually pretty quick. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open this and see what our logs look like here. Okay, so that weird message that we were getting saying that the, the folders couldn't be opened or whatever um, is apparently a known issue uh, that I've discovered on Reddit. Um, so so apparently uh, other people have run into the same issue. Um, there is, there's something wrong in here. I think it has to do with something in the way these are formatted or whatever, but uh, if you come over here to hub.docker.com uh, and copy from here and then paste into here and modify uh, accordingly, then if you come into logs, uh, here we go. Now everything seems to be working uh, the way we want it to. So just one of those little things here. Uh, in fact, if we take a look here, we can see that um, it is, uh, it's in the process of doing uh, some, some scanning here. So uh, it looks like it's running healthy. That's good. Let's open this up. So first things first, when we get here, we're going to create a username and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And of course, like it says here, this will be our admin user. So we're gonna go ahead and create admin. And here we go, just like that. Now we've got uh, we've got some different music in here from Fabulous, this is an old album, uh, Disturbed, Carbon Leaf, and Blind Melons. So uh, those are the artists that I had in that folder. It may be still uh, doing some scanning in the background, but uh, if I come over here to, to here and uh, hopefully, let me turn my volume all the way down uh, and then click on, uh, let's try Stupefy. And there we go. I uh, know we've got some music playing. Of course, you can't hear it, but uh, that's just for copyright reasons. I don't want you to hear it. So that's how quick and easy it is to get things set up. Now, again, uh, make sure that you copy the uh, the, the Docker Compose information from hub.docker.com uh, if you go that route, just to make sure that there are no uh, formatting issues in the Docker Compose file. Uh, just one of those weird things I hadn't actually experienced before. Um, but so apparently when I did this in the past, I copied it from docker.hub.docker.com instead of uh, their, their, their documentation page. So uh, that was something that we both learned together this morning. So hopefully you found this video helpful uh, and, and an easy way to set up a very lightweight, fast, responsive, easy to access from basically anywhere music server. So you can have your music, your personal music available wherever you go. So if you've got any questions or anything about this, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. If you've got other other uh, music apps that you prefer, that you like, that you want to see me take a look at for the sake of everybody, let me know that in the comment section down below as well. I'd love to, uh, you know, take a look at more different media servers and things like that. Uh, also, while you're down there, there are a few different ways that you can support the channel, uh, you know, whether it's through Patreon or PayPal or Coffee or Bitcoin or whatever. Of course, you don't have to. Uh, that's just an option that you've got available to you if you ever decide to do that. I, I do also want to give a big shout out to uh, my patrons. Uh, thank you guys so much for your continued support. Uh, I noticed there's been a, a couple of you in the last couple of days, which is awesome. I really do appreciate you guys just as much as the guys who have been here for, for, for more than a year now. Uh, so thank you guys, everyone who's a patron. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, but I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.